G'day folks, Matt Leja here with Maple Grove Productions. Another exciting day for us here at the farm. We got our trees in, 110 trees, all ranging from birch to sugar maples to nanny berries, choke berries, elderberries. We got all kinds of stuff. Uh, last night we went and, or two nights ago rather, we went and did a basic plan. We have a game plan now of where they're going to go at least, but... One thing I'm not too impressed with is the fact that they're not in wood chips, they're not in soil, they're just bare roots exposed to the air, which is not good. They're really dry right now. So being that we have so many of them, we're trying to get them in water so they don't dry out completely, but check this out. So here's the package, roughly 110 trees in there. They look like they're in good shape, but one thing I really am not impressed with is Look at that. Bare roots. No sawdust. No wood chips. No soil. These are native species, so they don't need as much babying as some of our other plants, but a couple broken tips here as well, which is no big deal, but yeah. They're they're clearly identified, which is a bonus. See like nanny berry tags there. So they should be clumped up all together, all the varieties together at least. But this, we, we, we have to get this in the ground now. We have no choice because if we let it sit like that, they're definitely going to die. So we're going to fill up this bin here with water to at least get them soaking for now. Start splitting them up. We'll probably start with the birch and the sugar maple since those are our most precious varieties. Get some uh, tree protectors as well for the bigger trees, birch and maple. I don't know if the tamarack's gonna need it. We got, yeah, Norway spruce in there, tamarack. We'll go through all of them as, as we're unpacking them, but it's gonna be a busy day for us here at the farm. This is also from the conservation. This is from a, the conservation oh, from, authority as well, but different. Yeah, they got it from uh, somewhere in Winchester. Different section. Kempville. Kempville, and that's an elderberry. But I was and the elderberries we have are black elderberries, so those should mix nicely together. Yeah. That one's black too? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe having a different variety will help for diversity. But yeah, let's get started. All right, so here we have them all laid out. I don't want to keep them like this for too long, so we're going to have to hurry it along here. There are the nanny berries. Gives us a chance to do an inventory and check their health as well. So there's 10 nanny berries. Here we have our sugar maples. And funny enough, the... Uh, trees are the smaller of the bunch. There's 10 sugar maples, 10 tamarack, 10 wild plums. Those are pretty long. 10 of the black elderberry, same as that one over there, although that one's looking a lot better than these. 10 choke berries. They all kind of look the same at a distance. 10 what is this? The beaked hazel, which will go in the front near mm -hmm. the uh, hazel birds, mm -hmm. so they can commingle. White birch. The bigger the tree gets, the smaller the, the, the sapling. Yellow birch. And our Norway spruce, which ironically is the smallest, but yet it can grow up to 30 meters tall. Oh, and the high bush cranberries. Alright, so there we have it. That's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. Some of them are broken, you said? There's a couple that are snapped. Like where? Um, hold on. One of these little ones is bent, so I think it's okay. They all look fairly healthy, though. They're not dried out. Maybe that one is yeah. a little bit... They're still damp. The roots are still wet. They probably took them out of the ground and stuck them immediately in this bag today yeah. or yesterday. Overall, they look like they're healthy. Yeah. Nice plugs here on the birch, on the uh, yellow birch. All right, let's get them in the water. Right. Now, of course, it would be better to do this in the fall when they're just about to go into a dormant state but these are all local species so I have faith in them 
and we're not going to baby them by any means. These would be, just be growing wild here, so it's just going to be dig a hole, stick them in, flip the sod, and call it good. We might add some myco, maybe. Maybe for the sugar maples to really give them a good foothold, but otherwise these are just going to do what they do around here. So as I was saying the other night, we went and made a basic game plan of where everything's going to go. This is not set in stone, this is just a loose idea of where to put what. But most likely we're going to scatter them, not have a concentration of any one plant too much in one area. The spruce, tamarack, plum, and some sugar maples. I guess the elderberries too could be used as a windbreak up here, which we're probably going to do to protect all of our fruit trees down below. Because there's a wicked wind channel that comes down all the way over there from the road. So these will serve as a nice uh, windbreak and also added privacy. This side of our property in the front doesn't really have much other than cedar and a few pines. You can see right over there there's some open space so that's going to get filled up. A couple sugar maples, tamaracks, um, pea whatever that is. <laughs> It's all coated. That is the plan. Right now they're just soaking, keeping wet. We can get started on some of them. What should we start with? We're gonna start out front and work our way towards the back, starting with the tamarack and the Norway spruce. So all along the side here, by the little stream, by the creek, all throughout the front here. From what I understand, the tamaracks and the spruce prefer a spacing of at least 12 to 16 feet. So we're gonna try our best to do that. Space them out, stagger them, and hope for the best. But we're gonna come along here, and luckily there's a good line to get at least two rows here in the front and the rest hopefully on the side. We might save a couple to go plant sporadically in the woods, which is never a bad thing. All right, you gotta take care of your other zones too. Zone, zone four and five need some love too, and some diversity with local species, so we're gonna do that. But now it's time to just lay them out, decide exactly where they're gonna go, and get them in the ground. I'm gonna start with the tamaracks here, I think. Okay, so I've got the first four on the ground, starting with a spruce, and then alternating spruce tamarack, spruce tamarack here again. You barely see them on the ground there. I'm trying to stay away from these other trees as well, but it's going to be pretty tight spacing here in the front. This is actually only spaced out by about six feet, but hope for the best. We gotta make do with what we got and I want it to be a nice tight you know tree line here for privacy and also has a good windbreak so all right I'm gonna start by getting these in the ground and then we'll be able to use those as guides to space out the rest of them the next uh, second row here. Go time! <laughs> First four are in the ground. Norway spruce, tamarack, Norway spruce, and tamarack. Here I encountered a massive boulder, so I tried to plant it more towards the bottom side of this hole. Hopefully that'll be okay and the roots can grow around that huge rock. But yeah, like I was saying, we're not really babying these at all, being that they're from around here. They're going to have to fend for themselves, so we'll see. It'll be interesting to observe. So now, probably get a couple more over there. Another spruce, another tamarack. 
And then I'm going to start on the second row and work my way back over here. Skipping this guy, of course, who's already had a foothold. Had to straighten him out this year, but uh, growing well. Alright, keep at it. So we got our two rows done. I'm on the last one of the second row here, which ended on a tamarack. But I wanted to show the whole process here from beginning to end. I do have some um, tree, fruit tree planting videos already on the channel, but we don't really have any tamaracks or other pines or coniferous. So this one here is not looking as good as the other ones. It's pretty small. Small little root system and the top's kind of dry. So taking a chance over here. This is not a spot where I would normally plant, but this little one might be okay. Sometimes you gotta figure you know, that the smaller ones that are struggling might not grow as big as the others, so that'll work out for this section because I don't want it to get close to the wires and normally I wouldn't plant anything so close to the stream here, but I think it'll be okay. And if it dies, well, it looks like it wasn't going to make it anyway, so let's give it a chance where it'll have lots of water and some shade and it'll be able to grow nice and tall. Oh, hopefully interfering with my wires <laughs> should be fine though. I'm gonna build it more towards this side the right side of the hole there so generally speaking you want to do at least twice the width of the roots now the roots are not very big on this one so I'll go maybe twice the width of my shovel which will be more than enough and as you probably know if you've been watching the channel I like to do square holes because it allows the roots to spread easier that way Especially if you're doing uh, potted plants, but in this case it'll work just the same. And I don't know if you guys do this or not, but I like to plant my trees um, with the roots facing the nearest water source. I don't know if that really makes a difference or not, that's just something I've always done. So when I'm wrapping it up here, I'll show you in a second how I'm going to point the roots as much as I can towards the, the ditch here and the stream to kind of encourage them to go towards the water. This stuff here, so waterlogged. Look at that, just <laughs> shovel just slips right in there. Oh yeah, that might, yeah, look at all the water coming up. That might almost be too wet for it, but we'll give it a chance and see what happens. A lot of this stuff is experimentation. I mean, they don't want to take a chance with plants, but I mean, realistically, these are two bucks a piece, buck fifty, so. It's not a huge loss. Of course, I don't want to kill a plant needlessly, but like I said before, this one is not looking that great anyway, so why not take that opportunity to experiment? Look at all that water from the stream. It's coming up. The groundwater's coming right up through the sun. So I'll take this off, and then we'll get this guy in the ground. You can hardly see it. It's camouflaged. Is that it? So, on second thought, with the amount of water here that's pooling and not draining, I'm going to change my course of action and go up a little bit, maybe back towards the sky a bit, try and get further up on the incline here because that's just going to drown the roots. So you can see here, moving over up this little incline by only three feet or so, no water. So very moist soil, but at least now it'll stand a chance. It's over there, there's no way. So at this point, I've been basically just cleaning this up. I'll take the saw, not move it too far away so that I can use my little shake technique to loosen that up and fill it up with that, then flip it upside down, which I'll show you here in a sec. But at this point, I'm just removing any big rocks that I find, roots, things that'll interfere with the roots of our little maybe trees here, like this big sucker. I'll have to take that out. That's from this guy back here. This is a huge tree, it's not going to mind losing one little root. So yeah, now it's just cleaning up this hole, getting our little friend in the ground. It's pretty moist soil, but this piece of soil will just shake it up, loosen up that dirt in order to give that roots a little firm grip. Yeah. It's very muddy. Wow. Hopefully the tamaracks are, I forget what it said online, but they if like they like water or not. It's either the tamaracks or the spruce. They probably don't mind this stuff. 
Okay. Just grab it like this and uh, shake. More roots there. The, they're just over there by the notepad. The clippers. straight as possible. No packing the soil down too much. How does that look? Does that look straight? I think so. I mean it has a bend in it, but yes it's fine. And then the sod upside down to kill the grass. Provide nutrients. And less competition for the immediate area. This one's got the best fighting chance possible now, at least. Because in that hole there, it wouldn't have survived. Mm. Too much water. That one already looks pretty rough. Yeah. That's why I planted it here. And we'll just water it in very lightly. It's got plenty of water where it is, but I'm going to give it some myco. And that's it. On to the next side. <laughs> 11, 12. Is it 12? 12 down, 98 more to go. So we got all of our spruce in, we got all of our tamaracks in. And now we're working on two rows of hard maples here. That is a sugar maple right there. So we're just lining it up with that one. It's going to be one row of four spaced out by about 12 feet with another row of six coming down this way. And that'll occupy the majority of this section. We'll have some room for some more shrubs and other things here on the side. This section wasn't doing anything, so now we're going to have more sugar maples. Why not? I'm going to get those in the ground and then move on to something else. I don't know what we're down to now. Maybe 90 or 80 trees, something like that. <laughs> Got to think about how many you've done, not, not how many are left. So that's the maples done. I need a break. We actually had some extras here. So we added to our second row. It's going to be hard to see. They're very camouflaged in this uh, dry foliage. But um, yeah, some of these will need to be straightened up probably later on. But hopefully they have enough sun to grow straight. Lots of good worms in there, lots of grubs. And yeah, we had some extra ones like this that had a tiny stem growing off of a root system. So threw those in the ground too. Might as well try. Don't know if they're going to take or not, but it's worth a shot. So like this one here, it's pretty much all roots. But there was a little piece that was sticking out, so that might just be enough. You can see here, same thing. So we're going to put some cages on these to protect them and to <laughs> remind us where they are because they're so small. That one's so small I can hardly even get it in the frame. And then of course you always got some weird ones that are growing funny like this one. So that'll probably need to be trained at some point, but we'll see what it does. Two rows of new sugar maples. Got about... 12 or 13 more to add to the arsenal. So, next we're moving on to birch, yellow and white birch. So, here we are again, day two, back at it. Cat's afraid to go outside for some reason. Um, yeah, we're on to the plums, the berries, choke berries, nanny berries, elderberries. Let me show you the line. So this is kind of an experimentation line here going down the hill. It should catch water pretty good, but we got, starting over here, we have a nanny berry, a choke berry. Tried to space them out by about maybe five or six feet. Um, 
Next is a black elderberry. There's a wild plum, and it's intentionally leaning this way so that the fruit doesn't fall too much over there on that side. But we may have to train that later, like a lot of them. And then down here, a real experimentation, because these like uh, water, so they prefer to be near streams or bodies of water. This is a high bush cranberry. So I'm going to try it down here at the bottom of the hill. Hopefully it'll catch all the water that runs down. We got our last spruce and tamarack over there, as well as a mystery tree of some sort. And the fiddleheads are out. So, continuing on, we're down to maybe 70 trees or so left to plant. Beautiful day. On a little side note, I don't know if I showed this on the channel yet or not, but uh, check out what this woodpecker is doing to the cedar tree. I thought he was living in here, but no. I think he's trying to get to some insects. Some kind of grubs, maybe, inside. But it's full of cobwebs, so he hasn't been back. But this is a good, solid, sturdy cedar tree, so I don't want to lose it. The broccoli tree. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was interesting. Oh boy. You wouldn't think it, but planting trees is a lot of work. <laughs> when you do it right, I suppose. You could just dig a hole and throw a tree in or a seed and hope for the best, but if you do it carefully, you take your time. I don't need to say this. If you guys are watching this video or this channel, you do that yourself, I'm sure. But we've got all of our elderberries done. Don't mind me, I gotta multitask and talk to the camera as I wash the old hands. Getting pretty dirty here. But um, we've got all the elderberries done. We've got some other nanny berries and all the cranberries done along the creek. I'll show you that here in a sec. Now we're moving our way back towards the other part of the front yard. And then the only thing left is gonna be really uh, the woods. We're saving a few from each species to plant in the woods in various places and also in a spot where I'm gonna have hopefully a cabin someday. So that to take into consideration. Right? right. And fiddleheads. Some are too big almost and some are not quite fully developed yet. You should be good. Just gotta boil the hell out of them. Oh boy, so here we are, day three. And they're still not all in the ground. I really, under normal circumstances, would never leave trees to soak for more than 24 hours, but we don't have a choice. Should have hired some extra hands, but uh, as you can see over here, Sugar maples are in the ground. I went and put the tree protectors on them. Tree protectors are so long I was able to cut them in four and use those on some of the smaller treelings. Over there you can see as well we've also got all of our nanny berries. Well, I say all, but nanny berries, choke berries, elderberries, all the berries uh, except for these. So these are actually, with my future glasses on, I'm going to go plant these over in the area where I'm going to build a cabin in the future. So in 5-10 years from now, once I start building the cabin, there's going to be a nice foothold of berries and other delicious edibles out there. So I can take breaks and, uh, yeah, be able to take breaks and have a munch while we're building the cabin. So even got some birch over there. I don't know if you can see them or not. Off in the distance there where Zoe's fairy garden is going to go. We got a couple of white birch and a couple of yellow birch in the ground already. And those are protected as well. So the only thing I have left to do as far as protecting from pests and rodents and things is over there. I went and pulled off the white tree covers of our trees that we planted last year. They needed light so now they're starting to bud. But we're going to put some metallic uh, cages, metal uh, mesh, 
protect them as much as possible and uh, a few of the berries and wild plum that's another one I forgot to mention the wild plum as well needs a little bit of protection so I'm gonna put some tree covers on those and then we're gonna be done trees fruit trees nut trees oh yeah speaking of nuts yes I'm well aware that sounded strange when I said that just now but you know what I mean we have our hazels in the ground here as well protected these are pretty easy to plant. Two by two hole. It needed to be, oh, well, they say two feet deep, but we've got them in maybe a foot, foot and a half. That's plenty. They got a good foothold there. Some of them were babied with compost. I, I know I said I wouldn't, but sometimes you can't help it. If there was missing soil as well, we kind of filled that up once the roots were covered. We filled up the rest of the hole with compost and some of them had huge rocks so it left a void in the ground that we had to fill up with something so these here did get a little top dressing of compost you can see the hazels going all the way around this little eye shaped section here so they're interlaced if you will with hazel burt hazel hazel burt hazel 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 didn't want to get too close to my well either Hazelbert, Hazelbert, and then another Hazel here. I was going to put one here, but there was a massive boulder there, and it's just, it's a bad spot. And plus, Ange wants to see her beautiful lilac bush from the living room window, so. But this should come together nicely. We're going to wood chip this. Have a nice little patch. We've got some echinacea. I don't know if I showed this on the last clip or not, but we've got, went and got some uh, echinacea, some white and red. Remember the exact variety here, coneflower, echinacea, and I love echinacea. It's such a useful medicinal plant. Ooh, this one's a little, looking a little rough. Looking a little droopy. We have to really get that in the ground. It's dry as hell. Coneflower, and what's this one called again? Coneflower, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, I see. Powwow white. Pow wow, wild berry. So there you go. This is going to be all echinacea and other useful plants to attract pollinators and whatnot. And you can actually see some echinacea from last year that's coming up because it is a perennial. So we had a red one here. The red one did really well. The white one, not so much. But as I say that, I think that might be some coming up here. So it wasn't a total loss. I did spread seeds here as well. So we'll see what comes up. This stuff here was some type of ornamental plant, and it's just crazy invasive, so I might pull that out, but I also want to try and leave a little bit of everything so we don't completely eradicate our property of one particular plant that we might need down the road. I can always move it to, I don't know what that is over there, but I'll probably leave a little patch of that, as well as that stuff that spreads like crazy. And we'll probably leave a boulder, I might even add another boulder on the other side for a microclimate, microclimate, I can't say that word today, microclimate. Eventually we're, we've decided we're going to add a couple of beds here, probably mirror what we did over there, so one more long bed, two small ones, and then Ange is working on two more long beds going this way, over yonder. So that's pretty much it for the front and the backyard. We've got all of our trees in except for Ooh, maybe 20 or so in that wheelbarrow that we'll be taking into the woods. Scattering, planning near the future cabin. Boy, it was a lot of work. We'll be thanking ourselves in 5-10 years from now, though, when everything starts to get abundant and crazy and crazy good, that is. Oh, and one more little bonus that I can show you is we found the perfect place for, I don't know where they went to, Ange probably brought them in. They're supposed to, they're announcing for one more day of frost. So, better safe than sorry. But um, we're going to have black currants here and red currants over there because they like the morning sun and they like shade later on in the day. So, it's perfect for here since that is the east over there. Get morning sun and then they'll probably cap off around, I don't know, one or two in the afternoon. So, it should be perfect for currants and doesn't get closer than that for zone one. Oh, and one last thing too I almost forgot to mention. We have all the supplies ready, 
Boy, is it ever hot in here. God, it's got to be 10, 15 degrees warmer in here. It's 30 C today, and it's got to be 35, 40 in here. Easy. It's like a sauna. But we've got all the supplies. It smells great in here. It smells like a lumber yard. All the supplies to finish. All the aspenites to finish the greenhouse, the uh, treehouse. And we've got our polycarb roofing. Our 2x4s are many, many 2x4s, 2x6s, even a 16-footer in there. And then all of our salvage materials that we have left over here. That's crazy how much, how little there is left of this salvage material. We've been using it, using, using it for everything, everything possible. But greenhouse supplies are in. We have everything we need. We've got the screws. We've got the materials. Now it's just a matter of finding the time and, of course, the energy. So that is it my friends. I'm going to wrap it up here because it's getting to be a long episode. Three days in the making. I mean, uh, we'll start up something new. Whenever we go plant stuff in the woods, maybe we'll make a whole episode out of that. Farming the woods, as it were. But uh, we'll let you go from here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, sub, comment. Let us know what's going on in your world. Happy gardening, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.